go off and actually start my workflow. Now, one of the really cool things about running step functions in the console is that you get this visual diagram for how your function's actually running. You can see we actually got past my check stock function, even though the stock was, in, was false, I have to come back and debug that. We got to our price order function, the price order function threw an order not in stock exception, which was then caught and redirected to my notify customer order not in stock state. Hello everyone and welcome to another video on modernizing your .NET applications to run with AWS serverless compute. In this final video of the series, we're going to have a look at multi-step workflows. And what I mean by that is a background service that might run for longer than 15 minutes, which is the longest timeout a Lambda function can have. Or maybe it's a process where you need to orchestrate multiple distinct and unique steps. And you might need to handle retries, handle failures at each individual steps in a different way. And we're going to do that using AWS step functions. So we're going to take the simple queue processing example that we had in an earlier video, of which there's a link in the description. And we're going to update that to run across multiple Lambda functions using step functions to orchestrate that workflow. What we had originally is a simple Lambda function that's taking data from a queue and it's going to first check if there's stock for all of the items on the order using the stock checker, check stock method. And then it's going to generate a price for the order using some kind of, of pricing engine. Under the hood, all this is doing is just generating random numbers. If I look at my pricing generator, it just generates a random number between a thousand. So probably not the e-commerce example you want to be using in the real world, but this is, it will, for the purposes of this demonstration, it will be absolutely fine. Now let's say, for example, we want to handle maybe errors of some kind, or maybe our pricing engine sometimes takes an awful long time to respond. And we don't want to have to worry about that in our application call. Well, this is where we can start to break this apart into two separate Lambda functions, because this is two separate functions. Right? We've got one thing that's checking stock and one thing that's pricing orders. There are two unique building blocks that are used to be put together to build the same process. So the first thing we're going to do is going to split this out into separate Lambda functions. Now, the message that comes in from SQS is of this type place order command. So the first thing we want to do is create a check stock function. And this check stock function is actually going to take the place order command as its input parameter. And remember the .NET runtime can automatically deserialize JSON on our behalf. So this is going to be a workflow. This Lambda function is going to get some data passed to it in JSON that meets the schema of this place order command. And then we're actually going to run that same logic we had in our larger Lambda function to loop over each item on the order and check if that item is in stock. And then what we're going to return from this Lambda function is this order state object. See, we're creating some new order state here. We're going to create a new order, add our items and add our customer name. Now, this order state object is just a custom object in our so we've got this order state object that then has an order, order has a name and the items. And it's this order state object that's then going to be passed from step to step within step functions. The simplest way to think about step functions is as a workflow engine, but actually it's really described as a state machine. Lambda's completely state. Step functions can help to carry that state from Lambda function to Lambda function. So this is our order processing state. So we've got our check stock function. That's all it's responsible for now is checking stock. If we think about the single responsibility principle that we have in general .NET programming, we're now applying this to our Lambda functions. Each function has a single responsibility. So the second step of this workflow is of course, to price the order. If we have a look at our price order function now. This takes broadly the same format, but this time the input to our function handler is that order state. So remember step functions is going to take the output from our first step in JSON, pass that to our next step in JSON, and then the runtime is going to deserialize that 
on our vector graph. So then we get this order state object. Now, the first thing I'm going to do in my pricing function is just to check if any of the items aren't in stock. And if they aren't, I'm just going to throw an order not in stock exception. And I'm actually going to move that same piece of code to the end of my check stock function. I'm going to pop that in there as well and just change that to say if my command dot items if my command dot item dot any has items in stock and the reason i put this in both places is so that of course if my stock isn't in stock at this point then we can just error but if someone is using my price order function independently remember these are building blocks that can be put together in different ways i just want to program defensively to make sure that my pricing engine isn't pricing orders that aren't in stock so we'll put that check in both places and then it's going to run this price order method from our pricing engine set the price of the order in my state to be the price that comes from my pricing engine and then i'm just going to return that state i'm just going to deploy this now very simply using sam if we look at my sam template just got these two lambda functions my price order function and i've got my check stop function so i'm going to go off and deploy these now with aws sam and we'll come back into the aws console and look at how we can build out these workflows. Okay, so I've deployed these two Lambda functions now, and we've got our check stock function, and we've got our price order function in the console. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go off to the step functions console, and typically I wouldn't recommend doing things in the console and focus instead on using some infrastructure as code framework, but actually, when you're building out step functions, using the console is the easiest way to start. And that's because of the workflow studio functionality in the AWS console. And this allows you to design your workflow visually using a really nice drag and drop interface. So what I can do here is I can drag on a Lambda function and I can drag on a second Lambda function. Remember, we need two Lambda functions here, one to check the stock, one to price the orders. I'm gonna rename this first step to be check stock. And the function name I want to invoke is my check stock function. Then I'm going to go to this error handling tab. And this is where I can add some functionality to actually handle exceptions that are thrown in my code. And this could be things like my Lambda function timeout, or maybe the Lambda has failed completely. Maybe Lambda's got an outage happening. And in production, you probably want to handle some of these various different failure modes, just in case Lambda itself is offline. But what I actually want to handle in here is I want to handle the actual exception from my application code. So I'm gonna grab the name of my exception there, come back to my console, and I'm gonna paste in order not in stock exception. So I'm actually handling, I'm catching this error in my Lambda function now. And if it fails, for the moment, I'm just going to use a pass state, which is in just to add a placeholder. I will come back to that at another time, and that's going to be called notify order not in stock. We might end up replacing that with like a call to something like SNS to actually send a message back to the customer to tell them that their order is actually not in stock. Our second Lambda function now, of course, is going to be our price order step and our price order step is to use our price order lambda function and again i want to add that error handling to handle my order not in stock exception and again i'm going to flip that back to notify customer order not in stock and we've now got a workflow a really simple workflow albeit but a workflow we can now use to process our orders so if I hit next there, and let's just create this in the console, and let's call that order processor. We want to create a new item role, and I'm just going to turn logging on and tracing on for the purposes of this demonstration. This will take a couple of minutes to actually create my step function now. So I'll come back in just a moment when this has finished creating. That has finished creating now, and we now have our order processor step function. So just to test this out, let's invoke this from the console. So I can say my customer name is James Eastham. And then we had an items property, which was an array. And that, let's have one product code. 
is going to be, let's set prod one, two, three. Now our quantity is going to be two, we want two of prod one, two, three. Invalid JSON in my, there we go, slice execution. This is going to go off and actually start my workflow now. And one of the really cool things about running step functions in the console is that you get this visual diagram for how your functions actually running. You can see we actually got past my check stock function, even though the stock within was false, I have to come back and debug that. We got to our price order function, the price order function through an order not in stock exception, which was then caught and redirected to my notify customer order not in stock state. Now, if I hadn't put that catch in at the price order, the execution would have just completely failed and stopped at that point. Having these catches for both potentially Lambda outages or service outages, but also for your custom business exceptions allows you to really powerfully build out these workflows. Let's hit another create endpoint and my really simple stock checker only allows pro called in stock prod to be in stock. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into my product code. And if we start this execution again, you see we've hit our check stock function, stock's okay, in stock is true. And then we're going to hit price order. I've actually built a little delay into my price order function to kind of demonstrate how step functions can hold this state for you and move things through. And that has completed now. You see, we didn't end up our notify customer order not in stock step. And if we look, two of in stock prod is going to cost me £700, which sounds like a lot for a product that doesn't really seem to be anything. So that's how you can start to build out these or using step functions in the console. Now, you're probably wondering, James, you've just said that you always like infrastructure as code. How, what do I do now? And one of the really useful things about the step functions workflow in the console is that I can actually take a copy of the underlying JSON that's built up my step function. You see, I've got this JSON here. This is actually Amazon states language or, and this is what step functions uses under the hood. So if I take a copy of that JSON now, and I'm going to come back to my IDE. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file in here and I'm going to call it order processor dot ASL dot JSON. That's a GitHub. And I'm going to paste my ASL definition into my IDE here. So now I've got this ASL in my, my IDE as part of my source control repository. And now I'm actually going to define my step function in my AWS SAM template. And to do that, I'm just going to grab a sample of the AWS SAM documentation, copy that, come back to Rider, and we will paste that in here. So if you run a SAM init, and there is an example for step functions in the SAM init wizard, this is the step function you will get. It's a stock trading machine. But I'm going to update this now to be order processing. Remember, we've got two variables in our ASL, one of which is called price order function, and one of which is called check stock function. So we've got price order function, and we've got check adoption, and these will use the price order function from and the check stock function from there. So now when I deploy this, these variables will get substituted in. We don't want a trigger for our step function just at this moment in time. And then we actually need to add the permissions to our step function to allow step functions to invoke our Lambda functions. So we can do that using the Lambda invoke policy. And I can copy both of them things in there. And now I just need to check that this definition URI is correct. I've moved my ASL into the same folder as my actual SAM template. And we've now got that definition URI ready to go. Let's actually go off and deploy this now. So if I navigate to my, the right folder, and then we've got serverless multi step and then it's within my message processor folder and if i run a sam build in here of course it's going to compile my two lambda functions again as part of that sam build command and then i can run a sam deploy and this is now going to go off and deploy both my two lambda functions again if there's actually been any changes and then it's going to deploy my step function using the asl that i have defined and this is one of the other really cool things with sam as well as having this 
abstraction on top of cloud formation for Lambda functions that allow us to really simply add policies and events and things like that. The same applies for step functions. You see the type here in ASL is AWS serverless state machine. And that's what allows us to have this policy section and just simply say, I want a Lambda invoke policy. And then at the point when Sam deploys this, it will manage that creation of the IAM role, the adding of the right policies to our, our IAM role to allow it to invoke our Lambda function. If you flip back over to our terminal now, you see that has created successfully. So we now have our workflow. And if I go to my state machines, you see I've now got two active step functions, one that I created manually, one that was created through AWS SAM. I'm going to just go and grab a copy of this execution contents here. And then I'm going to invoke my brand new step using that JSON. And this will now complete successfully. So you've done the check stock step, all happy days. And this has actually created all of the requisite resources for us. It's created this I am role and it's given this I am role the permissions to be able to invoke our two Lambda functions. You've got a Lambda invoke policy there. Done everything on our behalf. So I realized that was a really simple example of how you can build out workflows in step functions. And this actually is my normal develop workflow, development workflow for step functions is to develop in the console using workflow studio, copy that out, paste that into my IDE, and then deploy that using AWS SAM or Terraform or whatever infrastructure as code framework it is that you like to use. Now, in terms of getting messages from our queue into our step functions, that's not something that step function can support natively. And to do that, we can use a service called Amazon EventBridge and pipes allows us to create point to point integrations between things like SQS and step functions. I've got another video on my channel that goes into that. I'll pop the link for that in the description so you can add that next step to start your step functions workflows using messages in a queue. But I hope this video has demonstrated the power of step functions and how you can use it to orchestrate these different business workflows, regardless if each step is going to take a long time. Because initially you might think that's not a good fit for Lambda, but the step functions plus Lambda combination is perfect for these long running batch processing, data processing workflows. As always, if you've liked this video, please like, please subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below or reach out on any of the social medias and I will see you all next time.